Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. First at noon, a court security employee with the Bear County Sheriff's Office is now free after he was detained early this morning. Multiple sources telling KSAT 12's defenders that he is accused of conducting traffic stops in an unmarked SUV that looks like a patrol vehicle. We're told a law enforcement officer from another agency saw it happen and reported it. The BCSO employee detained on the city's west side just before one this morning. So far, he has not been criminal charged. San Antonio's fire investigators giving a long, hard look at an east side home that was destroyed by fire overnight. They say it had no working utilities and the fire burned a man out of that home in the 100 block of F Street. As Katrina Weber reports, for a while, people had feared he had perished as well. This is the relative calm after a scary storm. What these San Antonio firefighters initially thought was a life or death race against time. Family members in the front of the house said they thought that they, they were insistent that their father family member was in that structure. With flames burning through that small building behind a main home in the 100 block of F Street, firefighters immediately started working to put them out. They say the stress of it all was getting to the man's family, too, so they called in police to calm them down. In the middle of the commotion, though, came a welcome surprise. Then he, in fact, showed up to the scene, so it was good. It, that was no longer an issue. Unbeknownst to his family, the man had gone out and wasn't home when the fire broke out after 3.30 this morning. The firefighters here definitely had a lot to juggle. The flames, the family's fears, and apparently their own gear thanks to changes brought about by the coronavirus. The social distancing and firefighting is a little difficult, um, knowing that when they take their SCBA masks off, they need to put their masks on. What no one knows at this point is how the fire started in a house with no working utilities. Firefighters called in arson investigators to sort it all out. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A murder case from 2018 still unsolved as police continue to search for a suspect, but now they think you might be able to help crack the case back open. Back in September of 2018, police were called to investigate after someone heard gunshots in the 9500 block of Perrin Vital Road. SAPD says 21-year-old Cavusia Davis was shot and killed while sitting in his car. A witness says that they saw a yellow Chevrolet Camaro drive off from the scene. If you have any information, you could call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could receive a cash reward if your information leads to an arrest. New details in that gruesome case when a woman accused of shooting her two young children, her mother, and then herself. She's been identified by the Bear County Medical Examiner as 37-year-old Karina Cernoza Dietering. The shooting happened around 8 Monday morning at an apartment complex on Henderson Pass on the north side. Police say the children's father went to their mother's apartment, looked through the window, and saw bodies on the floor. The father told police the mother recently lost custody of their children. The names of the children and grandmother have not been released. Now an update on a different murder-suicide case. This one happening around 7 on Monday night on Perrin Beidel near Sungate. The victim and suspect were identified. 23-year-old Manuel Jose Gonzalez accused of shooting 20, rather 48-year-old Claudia Garcia and then killing himself. SAPD Chief William McManus said when the officers got there, they found Gonzalez dead inside the building and Garcia was laying outside the car. Garcia was taken to a hospital where she later died. Meanwhile, COVID-19 cases in Bear County still on the rise. Here is a look at the latest numbers. Right now, Bear County has 1,307 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 56 people are in the hospital with 574 who have recovered from the illness. The death toll remains at 44. Coronavirus testing is seemingly becoming more and more accessible for anyone showing symptoms. And one of the newest sites for that, the Texas Med Clinic on the Southwest Military Drive area. Our Max Massey shows us there is availability, but there's a lack of appointments. We're here just outside the Texas Med Clinic on Southwest Military Drive, and I am joined here with the Chief Operating Officer. Now, how has testing looked like so far? Uh, well, Matt, we've been kind of uh, surprised by the amount of testing we've done or the lack of testing we've done. 
Uh, we're open uh, eight hours a day for the testing available and we're doing about 11 tests a day. Uh, Saturday was our busiest day at 23. Um, you know, there's ample opportunity for people to get tested here. We'd really like to encourage people to come out and get tested. What is this lack of testing? What do you think that shows you? Uh, well, we've been noticing across our clinics, uh, you know, in Bear County and, and other counties that testing numbers have been decreasing uh, since about the second week of April, which is when we were at our highest number of testing. I suspect that that means that the disease burden in the area is down because we're testing uh, exclusively those who have symptoms and it would appear that fewer people have symptoms. Uh, and so hopefully we're making headway on controlling this disease. What is your advice to anyone who wants to get tested? What do they need to know before they show up here? We're testing, uh, through, we're using the same process as the Freeman Coliseum. So individuals who have symptoms should call the COVID hotline. They'll be interviewed uh, over the telephone uh, and uh, they'll be sent here Primarily if they're in this zip code, this center is also focusing on individuals who don't have insurance, uh, but it's the same process that you would go through to do the free drive-through testing at Freeman Coliseum. All right, doctor, thank you so much. Sure. And if you guys have any questions, we have all this information right now, just head to ksat.com. Reporting on Southwest Military, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Max. Hey, we just released the results of the latest Bearfax KSAT Rivard Report poll. This time around, the question is centered around the coronavirus outbreak and how it's impacting people in our community. Now we want to keep the conversation going. So join us for an in-depth discussion about the biggest concerns locals have during the COVID-19 pandemic. KSAT will be hosting a virtual town hall tonight to go over the results from the latest Bearfax KSAT Rivard Report poll. It starts at KSAT 12 this evening at 630 and then we will live stream the second part from 7 to 8 this evening. You can also go over all of the poll results right now on KSAT.com. And another opportunity for you to get some more information happening right now. A panel of experts are discussing how close San Antonio may be to beating COVID-19. Five of UTSA's top scientists are taking part in the Second Community Conversations Interactive Dialogue, which is hosted by the university. It started at noon. We're live streaming it right now on KSET.com. You can find this story on the homepage. All five panelists are on the front lines of COVID-19 research, actively working to develop predictive models, drug therapies, and vaccines. If you want to ask some questions, you can do it via chat. The United States has now passed 1 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, while the spread of the virus and the death toll are still slowing. However, as ABC's Trevor Alt reports, some people are starting to ignore recommendations for social distancing. Officials say the spread of COVID-19 in the United States appears to be slowing down, but so far nearly 60,000 people have died from the virus that we know of, and now ABC News has learned the death toll could be much higher, possibly even double. This because people who died without being tested or died at home or another facility before they could get medical care were never counted. I think it's really important to try to get these numbers right so that the public can understand sort of why we're sort of making these major sacrifices in terms of the economy and the major societal changes. But as states push to reopen, many are starting to ignore recommendations for masks and social distancing. In New York, crowds packing public parks to watch the Thunderbirds and Blue Angels fly over. And in Video Brooklyn, thousands of, of Orthodox Jews, Jews crowding, crowding the streets for a funeral service. <laughs> Police were called to break up the packed crowds. Mayor Bill de Blasio outraged, tweeting, the time for warnings has passed. I have instructed the NYPD to proceed immediately to summons or even arrest those who gather in large groups. Also drawing criticism, Vice President Mike Pence, the head of the Coronavirus Task Force, who visited the Mayo Clinic without wearing a mask, even though the clinic said in a sense-deleted tweet they had informed him ahead of time their policy required everyone to wear a mask. The Vice President sought to defend his actions. As Vice President of the United States, I'm tested for the coronavirus on a regular basis. And since I, I don't have the coronavirus, I'm I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel, and look them in the eye and, and say thank you. Public health experts say part of the solution to reopening is testing for the virus and antibodies. In Philadelphia, efforts underway to expand testing in underserved African-American communities. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Dupree. Can I see your phone? And across New York City, patients lining up at urgent care centers, some waiting hours to get tested. 
Quest Diagnostics has also unveiled an antibody test that people can buy, though at $119 there are concerns many won't be able to afford it and the gap between those getting tested will grow even wider. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. They were a local high school football stars, some now playing in college, some in the pros, but they have not forgotten where they came from. They are back home helping out the food bank. Lara Mirrors with their story coming up. Plus, what the Down Syndrome Association of South Texas is doing to make sure that all the members feel important, even in the midst of a pandemic. Today, another round of Wish List Wednesday. This time, we're joining forces with our KSAC community partners to help the Ronald McDonald House Charities. This nonprofit has been keeping families close by for more than 35 years. Right now, the group is in most need of essential cleaning supplies and gift cards. You can drop off donations at the front door of the Ronald McDonald House. It's located at 4803 Sid Katz Drive. You can also donate money online or shop from their Amazon wish list. You can find a list of needed supplies and more information under the community section of KSAT.com. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Down Syndrome Association of South Texas continues to serve their community. Their Wednesday meetups for a teen and adult club are still in effect virtually. And that includes one of their most popular events, the spring formal. Elise Rivera visited one family who's getting ready for today's big event. She's doled up from head to toe and ready to spend the night away. I'm going to wear this dress at the spring formal tonight. 22-year-old Brianna Troy has been a faithful member of the Down Syndrome Association of South Texas since she can remember. Yes, I do like to be in a Down Syndrome Association. We stepped in probably when she was two weeks old. Tonight is the greatly anticipated spring formal. Because I like to look pretty take pose and just look at Brianna strike her best pose. I love it. <laughs> but instead of the normal meetup, the spring formal normally everyone gets dressed up. We meet at someone's house. We take pictures. Sometimes we get a limo for the kids tonight during the normally scheduled Down syndrome teen and adult club. It'll be a social distance celebration. I like when they do like dancing. Our adults typically like their routine. They like to have things sort of set. This is the next best thing. They can hang out with their parents and dance with their parents or dance with their friends over the computer and still have a great time. Last year, more than 50 teens and adults with Down syndrome attended the spring formal and usually parents aren't allowed. The adults and teens want to have their own fun without the adults hanging out. Oh, but this year things are different and they're really starting to miss each other, which is why their weekly meeting to hang out and plan for the event over Zoom has been crucial. Brianna even taught me some of her moves for tonight and I think I did okay. Now she's making sure her boyfriend and date, Gabriel, is ready for the big event. Love you. Love you too. There's still time to join the fun. The spring formal is set for 6.30 tonight and is open to all Down syndrome teens and adults ages 13 and up. To receive your free invitation on Zoom, you can call 210-323-6776. Reporting on Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Moving and grooving. Yeah, it's great to see yeah. them uh, continuing on with activities that, I don't know, lighten the heart a little bit. Look at that camera shaking right there. That wind is really whipping around out there. We'll have that for you coming up. Justin's got it. Talking about it later. Welcome back. We narrowly missed out on some showers and storms this morning, at least here in San Antonio. We got some off to the east of I-35, some pretty decent rainfall totals. We'll show you in just a second. But in the wake of that system, we've got a lot of windy conditions here across the state of Texas. Area of low pressure off to our north and east, high pressure out across west Texas, tight pressure gradient, and you get those strong northerly winds. The good news with all this is it is driving in some drier air, and it's going to make for a really nice morning tomorrow. Uh, right now, all the showers and storms are out in the Gulf of Mexico and really moving away. There could be some severe weather across the eastern part of the country today, but certainly not here in Texas. We're getting the chance to clear out now. Even some of those thin high clouds that were there really starting to uh, dissipate out behind those showers and storms. So here's the look at the rainfall. Again, nothing here in San Antonio, but New Braunfels about 0.65 inches. 
Blanco Canyon Lake, they picked up some rain there. Gonzalez down to Yoakum, Howitzville, Victoria, even Seguin, almost a quarter of an inch. But that's where the rain shut off. Anywhere west of that, uh, it, there was nothing to speak of. Uh, the storms got close here to San Antonio. Looked like they were going to move in this morning around 7 o'clock, and then they took a hard right turn, <laughs> moved right away, uh, right off to the east of San Antonio. 80 degrees right now. Dew point is at 53. We've got northeasterly winds at about 17 miles per hour, and they are gusty. Satellite pictures shows those thin high clouds that were left over behind that storm system really starting to thin out quite a bit. 79 degrees. In New Braunfels, 76 to gain, 77 Bernie stage, 84 right now in Hondo. And we've got some 80s out towards Del Rio and Uvalde as well. It's going to be a pretty nice day other than the wind, of course, gusting out to 30 miles per hour here in San Antonio, gusting to 21 in Kerrville and some of the strongest gusts right there around Hondo gusting to 33. Uh, we expect that the wind gusts will fall off this evening. In fact, tonight winds will go fairly calm and with clear skies, dry air. You know what that means? We'll be in the 50s tomorrow morning. It'll feel really nice. Dew points right now are already dropping off into the 50s, even some 40s now on the map. This won't last all that long, so we're going to enjoy it for a couple days. And then the humidity will start to return by the end of the week. So too will the heat as we look at the upper level winds. Uh, ridge that has been out over the desert southwest, bringing a lot of heat there, starts to shift in. And that's going to keep things pretty toasty. Really even going into next week, and the pattern doesn't change a whole lot. It becomes a little more stagnant. So that means we're going to move into more of a uh, summer like pattern. Unfortunately, some heat and humidity head our way. 86 degrees today, windy northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. And then tomorrow morning, 55 to start 88 during the afternoon with sunny skies. We're up to 90 on Friday, 93 Saturday. We'll start to get into that regime where we get morning clouds and then warm and hot, humid afternoons. Temperatures may return to the mid to even upper 90s in some cases. So get ready for the heat and unfortunately not a lot of rain chances in that seven day forecast either. Guys. Oh man, the humidity returns it does. <laughs> That's one thing I'm not looking forward to, but thanks for the sunshine. <laughs> no, really starting to get used to these birthday party parades. Yes, get creative with how they're doing these. Too. The one out in Converse yesterday yeah. for Bryce Wisdom. It was awesome. The heat, humidity did not stop hundreds and hundreds from driving by wishing Bryce a happy birthday. And his brother Rashad, along with some other area football greats, are helping raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. Coming up. Bryce Wisdom was all smiles on his birthday. His family set up a surprise parade for him in big board sports. The city of Converse and Judson High School all know how to rally around their very own and show them lots of love. Yesterday, Judson Rocket football player Bryce Wisdom, who's fighting kidney cancer, turned 17 years old and the community showered him with affection with a huge party. And check out Caden Stearns giving Mama Wisdom a high five. The parade started at Judson High and drove by his parents' house. It was awesome. Jessica Hunt has more. I was like, what is going on? Because I didn't know what was happening. I just saw the fire truck coming down. I saw a lot of cars. Everybody was honking. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. Bryce Wisdom's 17th birthday will be a celebration he will not soon forget. Hundreds of people, faculty and coaches, family and friends, surprised Bryce by parading by the Wisdom family home to celebrate his big day. It just puts everything to the side. Um, and just celebrate him, celebrate his day. We're not worried about appointments or, or calls or, you know, anything else. It was just all about him today. It was very special. I appreciate all the love. Everybody came out to support me and all the birthday wishes and all the gifts. It's not something that I've even imagined, but it's awesome. And it's so needed for our family and it's what keeps us going and keeps us fighting. And But today is a great day. It's a great day to be Bryce Strong. The Judson Jr. had already inspired his community with his public battle with kidney cancer since March 2019. One he's faced with poise and a smile. He doesn't know, but he teaches me a lot. He teaches me to get over it. He's teaching me to do a lot, and he's, he's really growing me up. He's an angel for sure. I tell my own players all the time, you're either breathing life into people or you're sucking it out of them. And, you know, Bryce Wisdom, he breathes life into people. Uh, every time I'm around him, I just feel better. The icing on top of the cake was an early acceptance letter to UTSA. That's real special. I didn't, I didn't expect it to come this early. I thought it was going to come like 
closer to the end of my senior year, but to come like towards the end of my junior year, that's it's, it's real special to me. Reporting in Converse, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. And Bryce's brother Rashad, a Judson alum, who's coming off a fantastic freshman season at UTSA, is teaming up with other area football greats to raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. His food bank teammates are Tommy Bush, Trey Flowers, Malcolm Brown, Caden Stearns, and Derek Kerstetter, all asking for our help to feed those in need. What we're doing is putting together a little donation thing called uh, Faith Family Food. And all we're asking is for, every, you know, as a city, you know, come together and donate what you can. Everything, everything makes a difference. You know, everything matters. So if you can only donate one can, if you can donate, a, you know, 100 cans of food, you know, water, whatever it is, it'll make a big difference. You know, it'll be greatly appreciated. Faith Family Food, to donate money, please go to my.safoodbank.org slash tackle COVID-19. Their goal is 50 thousand dollars and those young men are well on their way that's awesome to see those guys come back home and help yeah out. that line of traffic at that birthday that was that was <laughs> right? a long line and of somehow they there. surprised them so that's amazing right there i mean he's a teenager he knows everything <laughs> exactly that's pretty cool best kept secret <laughs> thanks larry hey heb recently removed some of its purchase limits on food items still ahead what other items still have restrictions though Plus, a medical lab in Houston creating a COVID-19 antibody test. Why this one is different from the others out on the market next. And having broken appliances is never an ideal situation, but it's more of a challenge if it happens during the pandemic. We'll show you how to manage when an essential appliance breaks. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. The U.S. economy dropped 4.8 percent last quarter as the coronavirus pandemic shut down much of the country. Not only was it the first drop in six years, it was the sharpest fall. In 2008, the economy shrank an 8.4 percent annual rate in the fourth quarter, and experts expect the numbers will be far worse this time around. The Congressional Budget Office estimates the GDP will drop at a 40 percent annual rate for the quarter. A medical diagnostic lab in Houston is now capable of testing thousands of blood samples for coronavirus antibodies. Center Gene Laboratories now offering a COVID-19 test that can detect whether you have been exposed to the virus or not. The difference between this test and other antibody screenings is that this is approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA says it wants to make sure that commercial tests are accurate. So far, they've only authorized four. Dozens of tests are being marketed in the U.S. without the FDA's authorization. There are some tests getting a lot of scrutiny from those antibodies. As CNN's Elizabeth Cohen explains, some researchers are questioning the accuracy of the tests. Antibody testing to check for past infection. Officials have said these tests are critical to reopening the economy. But there are concerns many of them don't work very well. The problem is that these are tests that need to be validated and calibrated. And many of the tests out there don't do that. So scientists in California, including at the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub, decided to see how are they working. Out of the 12 tests they looked at, several had frequent false positives. One got false positives more than 15 percent of the time. Three others, false positives more than 10 percent of the time or more. One of the researchers calling these results really terrible. Last month, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration relaxed their standards for these tests, allowing them to be sold without submitting any data showing that they work. For weeks, the FDA and other federal agencies have been saying they'll figure out which tests work best, but the FDA telling CNN they have nothing to share on this effort. While government scientists try to work this out, doctors at Texas A&M announcing they're going to start a clinical trial of a 100-year-old tuberculosis vaccine. It can help boost the immune system, and they hope it will work for COVID-19. Sometimes we have found that an old drug one that we've used for years can serve a new purpose. An advantage of old drugs for new purposes, they've been used before, so doctors know a lot about their safety profile. 
Hundreds of millions of doses of the BCG vaccine are given every year, mostly in developing countries. A disadvantage, since it wasn't designed specifically for COVID-19, it might not work for COVID-19, and it could be harmful to some. It seems a bit of a stretch, but it's very novel, and desperate times demand desperate measures. It's worth a clinical trial. In the end, it could be a combination of old and new drugs that get us out of this pandemic. We need a multi-pronged approach because we need help here and we need to go down every trail, investigate every possibility. Okay, so yesterday was a bad hair day because it was humid. Today's a bad hair day because <laughs> the wind's blowing 100 miles an hour out there. No, this is awesome. It oh. feels good out there. All right. Well, listen, we got over this. Every day is a bad hair day now because we can't get a haircut. So it's, <laughs> it's all working out that way. It, it, it is windy out there. We had that storm system move through this morning. And behind it, we've got some gusty northerly winds. I want to show you a picture on our KSAC Connect. This is from Canyon Lake Aggie. They picked up six tenths of an inch up there at uh, Canyon Lake. Uh, they were one of the beneficiaries this morning of the storms. San Antonio was not, as we mm -hmm. pointed out earlier. We missed out on a lot of the rain. Those storms now moving out into the Gulf of Mexico, and we've got the all clear here around South Texas at this hour. Just a few thin high clouds left over. Temperatures on their way up, 80 degrees at the airport right now, 79 Randolph, 79 Stinson, 84 Hondo, 81 right now in Divine. And we're going to see sunny skies, I think, as we go out into the uh, evening hours, 86 degrees at 5 o'clock. 83, 7 o'clock, 72, 10 o'clock. Northerly winds 10 to 20, but those winds will die down tonight. And that will allow for us to get into the 50s by tomorrow morning. But there is some hot weather on the way. We're going to talk about that in your seven-day forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. You could never thank the frontline workers too much for their bravery during the pandemic. Still ahead, what one toy company is doing to make sure they don't go unrecognized. And coming up in sports, one guy gets paid. Now he hopes more guys are going to get paid. Larry Ramirez will have that for us in a few minutes in sports. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. In your consumer news this noon, HEB has removed purchase restrictions on food items, toilet paper, and paper towels, but there are still limits on places like non-food items like masks, cleaning supplies, disinfectants, and gloves. They're limited to two items per shopper. The grocery store is also rejecting some returns for items like thermometers, laundry detergents, and cold and allergy medications. We've got a full list right now on KSET.com. And individuals and companies from around the nation are doing their part to honor the everyday heroes keeping us going during the coronavirus pandemic. Mattel is one of them. It announced the launch of hashtag Thank You Heroes, a special edition line of 16 collectible action figures. The fixture price action figures include doctors, nurses, EMTs, delivery drivers. They're available for purchase online through the end of May with shipping by December 31st. The action figures cost $20 each and $15 from each sale will go towards supporting first responder health care workers. Pretty good looking action figures. Yeah, a living room concert series and a virtual world tour. The coronavirus pandemic can't stop entertainers. They'll find ways to reach stir crazy fans for sure. CNN's Rick Nemagella has a look at the content you can stream today. Ain't nothing man a big can fix. Ain't no pain it can't wash away. If beer can't fix it, maybe music can. Country star Thomas Rhett takes the virtual stage in the debut performance of iHeartRadio's Living Room Concert Series. The Music Network will stream the eight-week series of shows on its YouTube channel Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. I wanna know. There's nothing tiny about this. Portland, Oregon Music Festival Pickathon is streaming 60 days of archival performances. Catch Wednesday's concert with alt rock pioneers Dinosaur Jr. at 4 p.m. Eastern on Pickathon's YouTube channel. Hi, this is Jim. 
And until we can get the Coral Reefers back on the road, we're going to be doing a virtual tour of past and present shows. Jimmy Buffett has the cure for cabin fever. Jimmy's Margaritaville TV is hosting the Spring 2020 Cabin Fever virtual tour featuring full-length past performances. Wednesday's Parrot Head Party is live from Wellington, New Zealand 2017 at 8 p.m. on the Margaritaville TV YouTube channel. Searching for my lost shaker of salt in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Live look outside with live cam. Sun's out, wind's blowing, humidity's gone. Really blowing. Wow. <laughs> I hope that camera stays up there. You know, it's always a trade off, but I feel like we can deal with a little bit of wind to get uh, some lower humidity and some nice mornings. I'll take it. Yeah, the, the humidity has really dropped off significantly. Uh, so far today, we're up to 80. The average is 83. We'll be a little bit above that, I think, this afternoon, maybe up around 86 or so. And yes, no rainfall at the airport. We missed out. Uh, some places did get some uh, decent totals a little bit earlier this morning. Will we have some more chances of rain down the line? We'll take a look at that seven-day forecast coming up. Healthcare workers are on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic, but while they take care of you and your loved ones, they're also trying to stay safe themselves. And that is why the need for personal protective equipment is so important. Now a couple of restaurants in our area are donating some of their profits to help provide some of that PPE. Bubbles 33 holding a curbside fundraiser until 8 o'clock today. They're donating 10% of all to-go sales, and that money is going to go to a local hospitals so they can purchase some PPE to take part. You can order from two locations. Bubba's 33 has a location in Universal City on Pat Brooker Road and a location in here in San Antonio on Northwest Loop 410. Meantime, we are watching the weather because it seems like every day it's something new, but at least Wind. hairspray yeah. is not in sh short supply. <laughs> Side effects. Perfect. Uh, yeah, wind. Wind is the big deal today. Uh, we had a frontal battery come through. Those northerly winds kicked in, and they've been strong ever since. So we've been looking at gusts over 30 miles per hour, guys. So, yes, it is blustery outside, almost. It's hard to say blustery, though, when we're in the 80s. Uh, but there is a good north wind. And you see the radar and satellite. We had some storms earlier. They looked promising as they dropped south down I-35, but just missed San Antonio off to the east. So our eastern counties did get a good dose of rain this morning. And then those storms eventually pushed off into the Gulf of Mexico. Now we're just left with some thin high clouds. Even those, though, are starting to go away. Here's the big picture. You'll notice most of Texas now in the clear. There is going to be more storms out ahead of this storm system uh, a little bit later today, probably out towards Georgia and the Carolinas. And that's where there could be some stronger storms. But for us, it's windy. Uh, and we've got high pressure, low pressure close together, good pressure gradient. And that really does kick up the winds. Those winds will calm some tonight. And uh, we'll see a lot less wind tomorrow. Outside right now, we've got uh, some of those high clouds you see off in the distance. 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 53. That number is steadily dropping. Northeasterly winds at about 17 sustained with gusts higher than that. And the uh, visible satellite picture uh, reveals again just very thin clouds working through. 85 degrees, Castroville, 81, Port SA, 84, Hondo, 82, Carrizo Springs, 78 up there in Austin. Pretty comfortable temperatures considering where we have been. You look at the 24 hour peak wind gusts, and they were pretty significant. But most of this is actually with that storm system that came through. Those thunderstorms really picked up the winds, but there was a wind gust of 54 miles per hour this morning in Austin. Wind gust of 52 miles per hour in Victoria. We had a gust of our own here at 38. So that, yes, the winds have been very strong and still are gusting the 30 now at the airport, gusting the 33 in Hondo, and th that is ushering in that drier air. So dew points are in the 40s and 50s now. This puts us in the dry and pleasant category. We'll start that way tomorrow. Most of tomorrow will be a fairly dry too, but the humidity starts to return as we get into Friday and into the weekend. Um, the heat's also going to return. We got a ridge pipe pressure starting to move in. This is that heat high we typically don't like to see. It starts to meander in our direction, and that's going to kick up temperatures, I think, as we get later into the weekend, and then probably next week we'll be looking at 90s on the map, uh, maybe even some triple digits out west. Forecast for today, 86 degrees, northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then tomorrow we'll go 88 and sunny, 90 on Friday, mostly sunny, and then 93 Saturday, mid-90s, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, hot and humid. We'll start off with some morning clouds each and every day, some 
warm morning lows. But tomorrow, starting off at 55. That'll be a nice start. And then we get into that more summer-like pattern as we get into the weekend and next week. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. One of the keys to the Cowboys' success in the 2020 NFL Draft was improving their defense, more specifically the DBs. After getting Sooners wide receiver CeeDee Lamb with the first pick at number 17, the boys used their second-round selection to start work on defense, and they were able to snag Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama. The first thing that stands out is his size, 6'2", 207 pounds, and a two-year starter for the Crimson Tide. Doesn't take long when, you, when you're watching the tape. Smooth, long, athletic, and you know we're putting such an emphasis on, you know, turnover ratio will be a big part of uh, our daily focus as a football team. And this young man goes and gets the football. So uh, the way we want to play, uh, you know, particularly in the back end, I think he's a, he he also is an excellent fit. Offensive lineman Isaac Alarcon was assigned to the Dallas Cowboys through the NFL's International Player Pathway Program. In an attempt to find talent from around the world, the league began this program in 2017. Since then, players from many countries have had the opportunity to seek a place in the NFL. Here's Will McKay, Vice President of Player Personnel for the Cowboys, calling Isaac to deliver the great news. On behalf of Mr. Jones, the Jones family, uh, Coach McCarthy and Cowboys Nation, you know, we're, you know, myself, we're excited to have have you uh, join us. Um, you know, uh, as far as the Mexican-American fans in, in, in uh, the United States, 54% are Cowboys fans. So you're going to have a bunch of people rooting for you. I don't know if you know, but I, I used to be a, a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. And now for, now for me being a, a player, it's like a miracle. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for the trust. And I promise you will not be disappointed of me. Meanwhile, Houston Texans star offensive lineman Laramie Tunsil says he hopes he has started a trend. That's after he was able to negotiate his three-year $66 million contract extension on his own without an agent. The deal announced before the draft guarantees the 25-year-old NFL vet $50 million, making him the highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL. So what gave him the confidence to do the deal himself? I feel like it was time to write my 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 own destiny if that, if that makes sense uh to put things in my my own hands and to get it done you just have to you just have to bet on yourself and, and that's what i did and i got the deal done i'm extremely i'm extremely proud of myself and the team you know i'm, I'm still speechless Tunsil is hoping his actions help inspire other players to do their own deals and not have an agent. Texas State linebacker Brian London II will join the Los Angeles Rams as an undrafted free agent. From Converse and Randolph High School, London is a great player who can make the Rams based on his special teams play alone. He's got a nose for the ball, that's for sure, and I guess I'm supposed to just toss back to you guys right just, now. You're good. Right? Am I good? I don't know. Everything's good. Hey, back to you. All right. Thanks. Best of luck. <laughs> Good job. That young man. Thank that you, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got SA Live on tap. We got a lot coming up. Yeah. You can tour the world, apparently. Yeah. Live. Tour the world yep. out of this world from the comfort of your own home. Yes. Okay. By learning about a country and what they eat. And guess what? We are going to play one of those games. And whoever gets a question right gets a snack. And you can play along at home, too, guessing the answers about the country. Right, and it's some of those snacks that you look at some of the names and they're Scandinavian and no clue how to pronounce them. So This is yeah. gonna be fun. Yes, indeed. <laughs> hey, how you can participate in a virtual cooking class. I got a one-on-one -on -one lesson in fresh homemade pasta. So the teacher is on the computer and she's watching exactly how I do this and I do it just like her. This was really, really fun to do. And she's, I mean, she's classic Italian chef. Plus, quarantine. Your four-legged family members might need some extra care while we shelter at home. We have some expert tips to keep canines coping in quarantine healthy and happy. All right, mealtime with the little ones can be a challenge. See what one man created that is transforming snack time for parents everywhere. It's just 
easier meals for kids. And you may have seen this. It was on the uh, GMSA this morning. Mm -hmm. The Pentagon has just released some video that has us kind of wondering, mm -hmm. do you believe in aliens or extraterrestrial life? Yes or no? Tell us why. Share your comments. Social media. Tag us at SALive.com. Do you? UFOs. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> We're going to phone home yeah. and a whole lot more. Oh, and SA Live <laughs> continues in just a few minutes.